All right. So in the, can you hear me? In the interest of uh, keeping the show rolling here and to try to minimize Steve's running around with the mic, try to speak as loud as you can so we can maybe hear you in the audience. So let me just, I just want to hear a couple of people's answers to that question, why are you here tonight? People who don't mind sharing, why did, why did they come here tonight? Please, not all at the same time, please. <laughs> Stop it, I can't handle it. Okay, we've got a couple of hands here. Uh, discover more about myself. Okay, discover more about myself. Okay, so hand discover over more here. about myself. Good. And who had their hand up over here? To pick up at least one idea I can use in my life. One idea, at just least, one. At least. at least one. Anybody else in this area while, while I'm <laughs> over here? <laughs> I want to figure out what the next chapter of my life will be and where it will take me. Next chapter of your life, what it will be and where it will take you. Kind of an important thing, right? Okay. Uh, expand my mind, create growth and momentum in my life. All right. Momentum, growth, expand your mind. Great. Good answers, guys. Uh, you will not be tested on this. <laughs> well, you will, but it's, it's, it's just your life, you know. No, nothing major. It's not really that important, right? Okay. We're ready to rock and roll. So, okay. um, good. We have one more, Frank. One more. Okay. Oh, sorry. Okay. Uh, just to get clear with uh, a specific dream and um, use tools and strategies to accomplish it. Okay, specific dream, tools and strategies to get there. Great, good. So you guys are, 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 are obviously taking this seriously. Good, so that's what I'm hoping to deliver for you here tonight. Something absolutely powerful that you can use when you leave here tonight, and you guys can tell me at the end if you think you got that, okay? Great, good stuff. So, I'm gonna tell you a little, just a quick little story, and I'm gonna ask you to, to work with me on this, okay? I'm going to assume that you've all come here with your life experiences, your ideas, your thoughts, and your belief systems and values, okay? I'm not asking you to get rid of those tonight. They're very important, and they got them here, you here tonight. However, I'm going to share some, some strategies and things with you tonight that you might actually really have problems with, okay? But I'm going to ask you for the evening to kind of imagine that your experience is wine. And if, if your cup of wine is full, and I'm trying to pour my new wine on top of your existing wine, we know what's going to happen. You're going to get a diluted drink, and you're going to get a mess all over yourself. So I would like to suggest that you kind of suspend disbelief for the evening. If you still want your wine at the end of the evening, grab it again. But I'm going to be pouring a lot of wine tonight, some different wine that you, some of you have never tasted before. So try, try to be the mind of the student. Try to just say, you know what, what if this person or this weird guy up there actually has a few good ideas. What if I could use one of them? So I challenge you to do that. All right, let me ask you a question. What is your life like when you're not on purpose? Okay. So what is it like when your life is not on purpose? What does it feel like? Maybe you've had a period of your life. Maybe you're in that period of your life right now, as a matter of fact, where you kind of don't feel like you have a purpose. What's that like? What's the impact on you? Yeah, there was a hand over there. No? Yes? Oh. Um, it feels like it has no meaning. And no meaning. you are in a, like in a trance every day. You don't have, you're not connecting to your everyday life. And okay, so you're kind of what just you're doing. like sleepwalking in your life. You're kind, in a trance. Yeah. You, don't, you don't feel like you're connecting with your life. Yeah. Okay. It feels meaningless. It feels meaningless. Great. I'll answer to that too. Very stressful. And life becomes very hard. Okay, great. Very stressful and hard because you don't have that meaning and it does, you don't have the juice, the, the mojo, as my good friend Austin Powers said. Not to sound extreme or controversial, I heard somebody say that was okay in today's session. That was what? Oh, to sound uh, controversial or extreme. Anyway, I, I guess what I was going to say is if you're not living, you're probably dying or waiting to die if right. you don't have the purpose or anything else. Right. If you're not living on purpose, you're probably dying. A slow, painful death, right? Okay. We're quoting all the classic movies now. Yeah. <laughs> Did I see another hand here? Oh, yeah, I was just going to say that you have uh, little energy, which is right. similar to the mojo thing. Little energy to do anything. Everything is a lot of work. It's, it's challenging. It's, it feels like you're, you're walking through a field of mud, right, with a couple of 20-pound weights on you, right? Okay. Anybody else? We, oh, okay, great. So it doesn't feel good. Well, uh, let, let's... We're, that's the bad feeling part of the evening, okay? From here on in, we're good, all right? I just wanted you to understand. I think you guys get that living without purpose is a problem, okay? Um, so 
what is your purpose in life? And how do you know? What is your purpose? Okay, I'm going to leave that one as a rhetorical question with you. So what are the most important priorities in your life? Would you agree with me that so many people, and hopefully none of them in this room, but it's possible. We've all been there. Okay? Most people live a life of obligation and not a life of significance. What does that mean? Most people live a life of obligation and not a life of significance or priority. What does that mean? Yes? Right, you're trying to please everyone else around you, and, and at the end of the day, you feel empty because you're not pleasing yourself. Okay? Would you agree with me that we live in perhaps the most busy times that humanity has ever been through? Everybody you talk to, I'm busy, I'm busy, I'm so busy, I'm always busy, I got all these things going on. I'm running off to the yoga, I'm running off to my job, I'm running off to this, that, right? We're all so busy, right? Aren't we busy? When's the last time you spoke to someone and said, you know what? I'm so bored, I just spent the last two days doing absolutely nothing. That doesn't happen anymore, does it? No, but seriously, if you look back in just very short recorded history, 100 years ago, a lot of people would have answered, yes, I didn't do anything today. I sat under a tree and I read a book or I, you know, I walked through a field today. In less than 100 years, we've gone from that to busy, 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 right? Just because you're busy doesn't mean you're doing anything significant, by the way, okay? You can be very busy. You can fill up your schedule with things that make you feel like you're doing stuff, but a lot of the time, what are we doing? We're just self-soothing ourselves, aren't we? Passing the time, you know, shopping's an addiction, coffee's an addiction, right? All the consumerism wants us to basically consume, 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 right? To distract ourselves from the reality that I'm not on purpose, okay? So again, it might be shocking for a few of you to hear this, but I'd rather tell you what I think, okay? So. In a nutshell, tonight we're going to give you some purpose. So there are two great days in a person's life. The day we are born and the, 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 the way, sorry, ew, I can talk. The day we discover why we were born, okay? Two important days. When were you born? And it's funny, the first one we make a big deal about for the rest of your life, don't we? When's your birthday? When's your birthday? Right? When's the last time somebody asked you, why were you born? Let's celebrate why you were born. Wouldn't that be a real celebration? Wouldn't it? They don't teach that in the schools, do they? Right? Okay. So people are born with a purpose. Some people never look for their purpose their whole life. I saw a funny cartoon when I was putting together this PowerPoint. It's this, this old gentleman. He's obviously on his deathbed. You know, you can see he's about to croak. And, and then you see him smile. He's like, I think I found my purpose. And he's about to die, right? So the irony of that is, do we, are we going to wait till that, that moment to get our purpose? Or are we going to get a head start and say, I want to find it now. And I don't care if it takes me a while, a year, two years. I don't care if it takes all my energy. It is worth finding, right? Absolutely. So our life purpose, the reason we're on this planet, the thing we're meant to accomplish, the gift that we're meant to bring to the world, once you have that, oh, my God. It was, it's like you were living your life with the volume on low the rest of the time. Okay? And again, you can't even explain it to someone who's never experienced it. Think of your happiest moment in all of your life. That feeling, that day or that hour, right? Feeling like that most of the time when you wake up and you go to bed at night. When's the last time you felt that way? Not a lot of people live there, right? And I'm not saying I'm one of them who's got it figured out. Far from it. But I'm working towards it. Okay? And I hope you are too. And if you make it your life's priority to find your purpose, a lot of magical stuff's going to happen. I promise you. Okay? For, I'll tell you a personal story. Um, for the first 40 years of my life, I was all about, oh, sorry, I didn't mean to kick that. Um, I was all, uh, not all about, but most of my life was about achievement, about, you know, look at me, look what I've created, look, look, I've got this bachelor's degree, look, I'm a teacher at the college, look at me, I've got this master's degree, look at me, look at me, look how successful I am. I was working two jobs, working over 100 hours a week. I was miserable. I was so miserable. About six years ago, I was sitting in the garage in my car with the ignition on and my dog in the back seat, and I wanted to end it. Six years ago, that's where I was. I wanted to kill myself. That's where I was, okay? The reason I didn't do it, I didn't want my dog to not have a master. That's what saved me, really. And then coaching found me, and I started falling in with people who actually had a purpose in their life and believed that a life of purpose was worth living. And um, about four years ago, um, the person that was in my life at that moment passed away of a brain aneurysm and died. 
And uh, I can tell you, that was another kind of gut check moment for me. But it really woke me up. After that, I really understood what it means to live every day like you don't know if you've got another one. She was 38 years old, probably the healthiest human being I'd ever met. She was a fitness instructor. Okay? And um, I, I can tell you, the last three years of my life, I've been living on purpose. And it's so amazing. It's just so wonderful. I'm not going to tell you I've got it all figured out. Far from it. I'm still learning every day. But to feel like I'm making a difference in people's lives, to have a real purpose in my life, I could die tomorrow and I know that I've done the best that I can these last few years. And it feels good. It feels really good. So again, I'm not here to be heavy on you guys and all that. But sometimes a little heaviness is good to wake us up, right? And tonight, you're going to have your purpose. It's going to be awesome. Are you guys ready for that? No? OK, I'm going to go home. Then. All right, let's rock this thing. All right. So life purpose. Here's the definition. Life purpose is not about a job, even a vocation. It is the round-the-clock, 24-hour, every day of your life expression of who you are and what you are when you're reaching your full potential. You at your maximum amplitude. You at your best all the time. That's your life purpose. You like that? Yeah. I like it too. Can I keep it? George. I'm sorry. I was just uh, going through the words and to making sure that I got them off. It wasn't a question. Okay. <laughs> I like this clock. It's kind of cool. I don't understand it, but I like it. All right, so finding your life purpose. All about discovering your priorities. I'd like you to put your pens down for a moment. I'm going to take you through a couple of guided visualizations. And I'm going to, what I'm going to do with you is I'm going to show you three different powerful motivations that uh, we have in our life. I'm going to ask you to close your eyes for this if you can. All right. So here's the first scenario. I've got a nice piece of two by four wood across your living room floor. On the other side of the piece of wood are all of your friends cheering for you to walk across this piece of wood. They're cheering. They want you to walk across that piece of wood. And you walk across the piece of wood. All right. So that first motivation we have is appreciation and support from other people. OK, you guys got that feeling? OK, open your eyes. All right. So you, you got how that felt, them cheering you on to get across the board? How many of you actually decided to walk across the board across the living room to get the appreciation? How many of you decided, I, I don't even want to walk across the board. I'm not walking. No? Everybody walked the board? Great. OK, so let's do the second visualization. Close your eyes. This time, we're changing the location a little bit. We're at the top of uh, two very tall buildings here in Toronto. And there's a metal cable stretching between the two buildings. The cable is taut. It's very, very tight. And on the other side of the cable is a nice $100,000 package of money waiting for you. You want the money, but you're about 300 feet off or more off of the ground. You're 30 floors in the air. Will you be crossing this wire cable to go and get the money. Open your eyes. So how many of you now would actually risk your life to cross that cable and actually get the money? You would? 100,000 is a lot of money. You, you try your luck at it? OK. Uh, just well, you're there. You know, it's, it's now or never. You can't, you can't basically say, well, I'll come back in a few weeks and I'll do this. It's, it's now. I got the 100 grand for you. So, No? You don't need the money that much? So most of you decided it's not worth it. You'd probably die. It ain't worth it, right? Well, no, because then I have to take care of my parents. All right. Cool. How long is the rope? The cable? If it's a foot, I'm good. I'll do it. A couple hundred feet. It's between two buildings, so the buildings aren't next to each other. All right. OK, last visualization. Close your eyes again. Now it's starting to get dark, so you can't see very well anymore. The rain starts picking up, and it's raining. It's raining, and it's raining. It's getting really wet, that cable. On the other side of the cable, I am holding your five-month-old baby or your mother. 
Are you going to cross the cable to save somebody's life that you love? Somebody you care for? Open your eyes. How many of you would cross the cable wet, dark, to save somebody you love? All right, most people's hands go up. Now, I increased the difficulty level about 5,000% from the one before. Did I not? So what does this mean? What's, why did I go so weird on you? It's like, killing babies? What the hell? What the hell? It's just an example. No, no babies were killed in the filming of this video. I'd like to just make sure that we know that. It was an illustration. It was a visualization. Why, why did I do this exercise for you? Yes, Julie. Uh-huh. Love is more important than money and family. A lot of times... We say family is important, but do we really, really understand it? And I find this exercise is a really clarifying one for most people. We would, I know I would, I would, I don't care, it doesn't matter. I want to save my loved one on the other side. It doesn't matter. If I die trying, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter because I, I have to. I have to give it my all. I can't stay alive on this side knowing I could have done something. You can't live with yourself, right? So again, it's getting that kind of inspiration in your life about you. Aren't you the most important family member in your life? You? Isn't that you? Seriously, don't you love yourself that much that you would cross that wet cable for yourself? Does that make sense? Bit of a mind play there, right? But I'm just, I'm just using this example with you guys so you, so you get different types of motivation and inspiration, right? We're all fueled more or less the same, and love is the drug. It's the most powerful. That connection with other human beings is very powerful. So how many of you, when I told you it was a baby on the other side or your, or, or your parent, were kind of like horrified and were just like, oh my God. You didn't like that part, did you? You didn't like it? No. Nobody likes that one. Did anybody like it? It was good? You liked it? It was good quality? Okay, good. Anyway, it's a good example, all right? So finding your values is the key to life purpose de detection. And I use the word detection very carefully, okay? We're talking about detecting your life purpose. It's not about finding it or discovering, although we called it discovering your purpose. We did. Detecting your purpose would not have been as interesting to most people. So again, the language we use for these workshops is very important. But it really is a job of detecting it. What is that? What's the difference between detecting and discovering? Any ideas? How is that different? Yeah, discovering is by chance, or it's like, ooh, I found something. I discovered a great restaurant. Detecting means, okay, I'm checking out there. I'm trying things. I'm going around. Is it here? No, it's not really here. Oh, is it here? Detecting is a much more kind of slow and deliberate process. Would you agree with that word is a, is a big difference there between detecting and discovering? So again, we're not going to change the name of the, of, the, uh, of the seminar, but it is really about detecting your life purpose and not discovering all right. So is your life purpose honesty? Is it respect? Is it integrity? Is it excellence? Is it community? Is it responsiveness? Any of these words resonate? Take a look at some of these words. Which ones resonate for you the most? Which ones jump out at you? It's like, that's me. For me, even though this one is the largest one, even if it was smaller, this one would have jumped out at me. Okay? Maybe that's why I picked this one. <laughs> right? But you probably have one word that's more connecting with you than others. Do you agree, agree with that? Good stuff. So values, as I was saying earlier, are the train tracks of our decisions for our life. Okay? And what does that mean? Well, most of what we see every day in life is people's behaviors and their attitudes. Those are very easy to see. We can see how people are behaving around us, can't we? We can see what their attitude is. You've got a bad attitude. Shit. Sorry, David. I almost caught it. Is David there? Sorry, Dave. Didn't mean to throw it. That was, I almost got it. Anyway, so behaviors and attitudes we can see very, very clearly around us. Would you agree with that? Now, norms and values, these are like at the center of the onion. We don't, the only way we can see values is by digging for them and really looking deeply to find them. Now, by someone's attitudes and behaviors, we can detect what their values are. So if somebody spends all their time at work all the time, they're workaholics, they ignore their wife and their kids, might, what values might you think they might have? What do they value in life, you think? Money. Money, okay. What else could they value? Achievement. Success, achievements. What else? Status. Status, okay. Anything else? Image. Image. Looking good. 
Recognition, yeah, absolutely. Recognition is important for them as well. Avoidance. avoidance. Tell me about avoidance. <laughs> Avoiding their family. That's it's not working out there, right? Avoiding what they have to deal with. A lot. That's great. What's your name, Suzanne? So here's the thing, guys. And when I say guys, I mean gals as well. Okay, don't don't take it. I just mean guys. I mean gals. <sighs> Business will respond quite directly to the number of hours and effort you put into it. Would you agree, however, that relationships are a little bit different? That it doesn't matter if you spend 200 hours in your relationship with someone. It's the quality of those hours and who you're being in that relationship. So a lot of people decide, hey, they make this, this decision. It's not even conscious. It's subconscious. And they say, you know what? I've been trying this relationship for 5, 10, 15 years. And you know what? I'm not getting anywhere with it. But this business, however, I've been working hard. Look at it. It's growing. It's nice. It's beautiful. Right? So what we have in society now is a lot of people out there who are basically chasing those kind of consumeristic success, power. Because look at all, all of who are the people that we respect and we, that are held as our idols. Rock stars, uh, movie, TV stars, music stars, right? Sports people playing for the NHL, NFL. Those are our heroes, guys. Nothing wrong with sports and music, by the way. But are those really the true heroes that we want to be led by? I mean, just because I'm sure they're great at what they do. But it's a different kind of society we live in when those are the most, those are the idols most people are chasing all the time, which is an impossible standard. So anyway, values are very deep, 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 deep rooted. And that's why we're going to figure out what your values are here tonight. So again, you know why you're making the decisions that you make. Okay, so from my book, Live It, over here is a quote that I have in the book. Any goal or dream that does not align with your core values, forget about it. It's dead. It might as well not even, it can't happen. There's no way you can ever achieve a dream or a goal that is not in line with your values. And that's why a lot of people get caught up when they're chasing the money, but inside they're a good person, because I really believe everybody's a good person inside. I really believe that to my core. But a lot of people end up getting all the success. I think, and again, I don't want to use anybody as an example in the media, but those of you who watched Dragon's Den, right? Uh, Brett Michaels, anybody know his story? Yeah. Can someone share it with the audience? What happened to him? Oh, I guess, um, funny, I was just watching his YouTube interview the other day. But yeah. Anyways, so got super successful, like really, really successful. Multi-millionaire. And then uh, he became a workaholic and started to ignore his family. Family. And his kids and he lost kids. everything yeah, except his money. Yeah. And he was alone with all his money and his big house and stuff like that. And he, he said, somebody I know very closely that mentors me, as a matter of fact, Ghost wrote his last book. So knows him very well. Brett Michaels can buy a Ferrari the way you buy a Starbucks coffee. Can you even imagine that kind of money? But yet he was so miserable because what he really wanted, and at the end, think, think about it this way. When you're on your deathbed, that's the regret most people have. They don't regret go not going to the office that often. They don't regret you know, doing those extra whatever hours or, or, or business. It's the time with their friends and family that they miss. Okay? So that's really important. So again, any goal or dream that doesn't align with your values, forget about it. So tonight, if you've got your values straight, guess what? We can really create some powerful dreams based on that. Okay? So values are who we are, not who we would like to be, not who we think we should be in who we are in our lives. So I can tell you, straight to your face right now, family is my number one value. I can tell you that, okay? I'd be probably lying to you because I don't have any children and I've never been married before. So do you see that, doesn't mean that family is not important to me now, but so far on my life purpose, my actions speak a lot louder than me saying family is my number one value. Do you see that? Okay, now values can change over time. Okay? And I'm not saying family is not important to me, but so far, for some reason or whatever, and I believe it's fear, I wanted to be a certain place in my life by ha before having kids. Right? And I was always too fearful to, to, to move forward and do it. And, and it was one of those things that, for me, uh, maybe that's what got me into teaching. I wanted that connection with young people, but maybe not the full Monty of having a child. Right? Does that make sense? See what I mean? It was kind of like a, a measured kind of, well, I'm getting enough, right? That sort of thing. So what I'm saying is, 
we're not going to pick our values from a list. A lot of seminars I've seen, that's what they do. They give you a list. Say, pick your values. Which ones are the ones that you, you espouse? That's not going to work because then it becomes a popularity contest against yourself. And guess what? We can't even trust ourselves. you believe that? Okay, so I found a way around that for you guys tonight. So we're going to get the real deal. You happy about that? So selecting values from a list does not work. It becomes a popularity contest for the most socially desirable values. Because of course you're going to want to say, family is important to me. Giving to charity is so important to me. How much money did you give from your after-tax money last year? Zero percent. Oh, charity is that important to you? Zero percent. Right? Again, actions speak louder than words. Okay? Does that make sense? Okay. Cool. So now what we're going to do, we're going to go into exercise mode. So you can go to the first exercise in your, um, in your, on, your, on your list that I gave you on your sheets. Okay? And this is what we're going to do. Exercise one is called a peak moment in time. You might want to close your eyes for this one if you want to take yourself there. Okay? You might not have to. I want you to identify a special and critical moment in your life. Let's say in the last 10 years, just to keep it logical. A moment that was especially rewarding or poignant. I want you to use a very limited time frame, a couple of hours or a day in your life. Okay? I want you to identify that. So I gave you an example here. For myself, May 15th, 2013, what was happening? After one year of sacrifice and toil, I finally picked up my brand new motorcycle book called The Lifelong Passion. And I can tell you after I picked up that book, I started crying in the car. I cried, I cried like a baby, just because I, I, it was just all that release of all that, that tension and, and just knowing that I, if I die right now, at least I got this to the world. It, it, you know, that's probably as close as I've gotten so far to birthing a child, is birthing a book. I, no, I, seriously, that's, that's what I would say. So who was present? Nobody. I was alone in my car and I was crying. Luckily, I called a couple of close people to me and told them about it. What were the, the values that were being honored in that moment for me? Achievement, success, passion, and never quit. Don't give up. So I want you to do the same. Go back into your life and pick a moment and go and see what values you were trying to honor there. Take a few minutes. <laughs> 